Hi guys, it's Dennis Berger with HD Living, and uh, today I wanted to give you a basic overview of the Control 4 Composer Home Edition software, and a few of the different things that you can do using Composer Home Edition to create your own automated events in the home. Um, before we get into that though, I wanted to briefly show you the Composer Pro software. Just for the sake of comparison, we won't dig too deeply into it because this is for dealers only or people who have been through the week-long dealer training session. Um, I often talk about how easy Control 4 is to program, um, and by that I mean easy as compared to other advanced home control solutions, uh, several of which I am trained in programming. Um, but still, for the, for the average user, for the average homeowner, that's a little too much. Um, in fact, that's quite a bit too much. Um, but you can see here um, all of the devices that are installed in your home, all of the drivers that the dealer has at his or her disposal, um, all of the connections that you have to make between components, um, between your control hardware and your AV components. Uh, you also have to tell it how all of your AV components are connected, which wires are going from which device to which input. Just to give control for complete control over the audio video experience and all of the other connected devices in your home. Just wanted to show you what that looks like. Um, we'll go ahead and shut that down and move over to Composer Home Edition. Um, as you'll see, as we're connecting here, it looks very similar. Uh, same layout, a lot of the same buttons. Don't get too overwhelmed by that. Um, it's basically just a consistency of, of the programming code. Um, but once we get loaded up here, you'll notice one key difference. And the key difference is you cannot actually modify any of the connections. You can't add or remove devices with the Home Edition software. What that basically means is that you can't mess anything up. Using the Home Edition software, which you'll have to get from your dealer and probably go through, you know, an hour training session. Um, you can do a lot of really cool things with your system, but you can't break it. And that's the key thing. With the Pro software, you can break it. Um, and in fact, even though I've gone through the Control 4 dealer programming, have the Composer Pro software, and am able to add all of my own devices, modify my own connections, I still use the Home Edition software when I'm just making tweaks to programming for that very reason, so I don't mess anything up. But you can see, you can see all your connected devices. Um, you can also, in the Media tab, set up all of your favorite channels. So in other words, uh, when you're in your home theater or your media room, your den, and you just, you know for a fact you want to watch Animal Planet, you can just press the watch button, choose your favorite channels, press on uh, Animal Planet, it's going to fire up the system, do all of that automatically. Um, the neat thing about it is I've been writing about home animation for over a decade now, really since before Control 4 came out. And with the old advanced control systems, uh, a lot of the dealers back in those days would complain to me that they spent so much time putting a worker, a programmer on a truck, sending them out to a house just to reprogram favorite channels. Um, when the cable company changes the channel light up, adds new channels, remove channels, uh, the really neat thing about Composer Home Edition, you can do all of that yourself. You don't have to call your dealer. You can if you want to. I'm sure they'd love to, you know, charge you to come out and click a few buttons and, you know, change sci-fi from 122 to 429 or whatever. Um, but you can do that yourself. What I really wanted to talk to you about today, though, is mainly the programming tab. Um... I've noticed something recently. I've noticed that my wife and I are both very guilty of leaving our laundry room light on. Uh, the reason that is, is because so many of the other lights in the home are set up with automatic events. I open this door, this light turns on, you know. But we don't spend a lot of time in the laundry room, so I've never gone through the trouble 
um, although it's really not much trouble of setting up any automated events. So um, there are only two ways I could solve this problem. I could either install a motion detector in that room and have it so that the light only turns on when it detects that somebody's in the room and then turns it off when nobody's there anymore. But I don't really use the room enough to justify that expense. So I wanted to just walk you through really quick what I'm going to do using Composer Home Edition to fix the problem. Um, now Composer Home Edition, really once you get into the programming tab, um, you'll notice that on the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen, it's the same list of devices. Why are they both there? Why are they on two sides of the screen? The reason being is the left side of the screen, you can think of as if or when. The right side of the screen, you can think of then do this. So if this happens on the left, then do this on the right. And if you've spent much time with Microsoft Excel, you're probably really used to if-then commands. Um, and it really works much the same here. So let me just walk you through what I would do uh, to, uh, to fix my problem of this laundry room light being left on too much. Um, go over to the left side, your ifs, select that laundry room light, from the list of connected devices. Now, this is a Lutron lighting system, and you'll notice I don't quite have as much programming control as I would if I had control for lights. Uh, that's because double taps and triple taps and things like that are defined in the Lutron system already. They have their default behavior. If you've got control for lights, then you really define in Composer what double taps and triple taps do. But in my case, if I press the top button on that light switch, then it turns on the laundry room light. That's fine. What I wanted to do, though, is to wait for a bit and turn itself off. Um, you can see here, I've already done the programming. Let's just go in and delete that so you can see how complicated that is. So if I press the top button on my laundry room light, we know already by default that's going to turn the light on. What I want to do, though, is I want to wait five minutes. I want to turn it off. So I come over here to the right side, my thens. I select programming control, which is where you do all of your pauses and things like that. Um, I'm going to set a delay of five minutes. And then when I do that, you see my control action here becomes a little button that says delay five minutes. All I really do is drag that into the middle under the script that it's already created. So delay five minutes, then I'm gonna go back up, I'm gonna find that light, and after that five minute delay, I want it to turn off. And I'm done, that's it. That's how hard it is to program an automatic event like, if I turn on this light, wait five minutes and turn it off. Um, I could show you some of the more advanced things we could do, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys the first time around if this is your first exposure to the program, but um, let's do something just a little more complicated, just for the sake of example. Um, one of the things that Control 4, uh, one of the big advantages of the solution like Control 4, which is truly a whole home solution, Instead of the do-it-yourself solutions like you can get, you know, your own thermostat, your own door locks, your own lights, and you can program them yourself, but but you don't really get the comprehensiveness with the do-it-yourself solution of something like Control 4, where your entertainment, your lights, and everything can talk to each other. Why would you want all of those devices to be able to talk to each other? Um... I'll give you just one example, and this is a little more complex than you probably need to know right now, but just say, for example, in my den, when I sit down, fire up my home theater, I often find myself standing right back up to turn on my ceiling fan, or at least I did before I connected a ceiling fan control, a control for ceiling fan control to my uh, home control system. I could just whip out my My Home app or grab my remote or my touchscreen and turn the fan on now, but 
here are the kind of automated device uh, events that you can set up when everything in your home is really connected. So say I sit down at my home theater, I turn on my receiver. Look at what you can do here. I won't walk you through all of the steps in the programming. I've already got it done because really it's the same. You go to the right side, you click a, a, a thing, you drag it over to the middle, but, but look what I've been able to do here. If I turn on my home theater system, because my system is also connected to my Ecobee wireless thermostat, I'm able to go in and say, you know, if the temperature is greater than this, then do this. So, for example, now when I turn on my home theater system, if the temperature in the home is 70 degrees or above, it turns the ceiling fan on to low. If it's 72 or above, it turns it on to medium. If it's 75 or above, it turns the fan on to high. And that's just the kind of thing you can do when not only is your home automation system controlling literally all of your connected devices, but when a piece of software like Composer Home Edition gives you the ability to, to, to live with your home, live with these devices, and come up with ideas like, you know, uh, when I do this, I want this to happen. And you can make these changes without having to call your custom installer. Um, that's all I'll really dig into for now. I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much. But if you have a Control 4 system and you've thought about um, getting the Composer Home Edition software and you have more questions about the sort of things you can do, or even if you've got a very specific question, hey, Dennis, if I want to uh, make my my foyer light turn on when I open my front door locks, how would I do that? Just go ahead and leave me a comment either here on YouTube or at HD Living, or you can find me on Twitter at Dennis Berger or at HD Living. Leave me a comment, shoot me a line, um, give me your questions. How can you do this? Uh, like, how complicated is it to do that? Let me know. Um, that's all they'll dig into for today, though. Like I said, I didn't want to overwhelm you. I just wanted to give you a really quick overview of of the things you can do with the software. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks for reading. And you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.